Welcome, you're listening to a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Chapter 3, Demons of the Burning Night, Part 5. We're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch, where you can find the various links as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode in the description. Last episode, the party fought two brass golem temple guardians and are currently trying to stop a highly mobile, coal-dealing white from opening a door to let more enemies into the fray. Okay, so the creature is clearly moving towards the door. Um, You fear that there are allies on the other side of this door. Silk, it's your turn. Oh, why am I so stupid? Okay, Uh, so same thing. I'm going to rush spellcasting. I'm going to move uh, again. Thirty-five feet is twenty-five percent. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. One, two. Uh, that says fifteen foot with a hypotenuse, so I'll move three of my seven squares. Yep, that's fine. So I'll get to there, and I will again thirty-five for you'll the bonus. Attack, five for yeah, and you'll also get a rear attack bonus. Not oh. worrying about you at all. It's focused on the door. It's oh got wow! Defending yourself against this attack. I don't know if I get that for spells, though. That's the only thing. Well, I would give it to you because it's a spell. I love you. It's not surrounded I love you. by anything. It's a directed. It's a bit like throwing a, a dagger or an axe, isn't it? You're throwing a shot thank box you. at it, aren't you? That's yes, why please. Get it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so here. It's all right. There's 15 undead on the other side. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping to prevent from coming in. No <laughs> Let's have a go. Nice. Okay, so that's 40, and then for the... Oh, 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 rear. I don't even have it set up. I never get rear attack, so... <laughs> I, I think, I mean, you can think about this. I just see this as a... You know, the creature can't see the attack coming. That's why you get a rear attack. That's cool. Surely. That's very cool. So, yeah, she she is definitely gesticulating wildly this time. I'm ending this, guys! I'm sorry! I, I don't want it to go bad! And... She lets it go now for the for rushing the spell shock bolt one extra round faster. That's a the first twenty five uh, is going to be a failure. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So here we go. Don't a roll failure. seven or less. Holy crap! Yeah, twenty eight or more, guys. Here we go. Come on, come. Oh, open ended. Oh, yeah. oh nice. nice. Open ended. Ninety seven natural. Two hundred and ninety is your total. Rock. It's a miss. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Primal. Right. Okay, so the uh, right. bolt strikes it in Dark the back, Craig. buckling its knees, sending it to the ground. Um, this fluorescent light seems to fill its skull. What oh, so I think I can it! What a little. No, that's a miss. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was uh, a B. Electricity critical. Um, 66. Its skull fills with a bright blue light. Poe is stunned and unable to parry for three more rounds. And he's going to fight at minus 20 and takes another 15 hits. So you haven't managed to kill it, but you've basically stunned it again. It's now buckled, collapsed to its knees, barely able to move. Oh, man. And then she's going to wander one, oh, two, you can walk away. Three. She's not going to be able to move towards the door for a while. Okay. That, that's me. Done. <laughs> I, I think I did it, guys. Ooh, she says, I think I've done a pee-pee. I was so excited. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shana, it's your turn. So you could run in and finish it, but you know it's still giving off this petrifying chill. I can take it. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Uh, but it is badly damaged on its knees, so you can get a rear attack, etc. Although it is healing itself, the massive damage you've been able to inflict is not sufficient. Before you make your attack roll, Shana, can you give me a channeling roll first of all, please, to resist the chill that is still coming off it? Okay, that's a failure. As you step in, the sheer chill of this creature that is obviously giving off it. Uh, what is left of whatever is animating it begins to escape actually begins to almost swarm over you as you look down at the creature poised to knock it into next week 
uh, you can see the ground around your feet suddenly turn to frost and ice. Ice icicles begin to leap up your legs and towards your arms. You take five hits and you're stunned for two rounds, I'm afraid. Awesome. Uh, you can parry, but this creature isn't going to be able to do much against you either, I'm afraid, Charlotte. Okay, so that's your turn. Ugnan, it's your turn. Okay, Ugnan uh, strides forward behind Sharna, grabs out two serenity leaves. Uh, no, I think they might be berries. Uh, yeah, two berries, yeah. and just says, open your gob, love, and just shoves them into Sharna's mouth. He really is quite slick with women, isn't he? <laughs> Does that work in a pub quite often? I don't know, it'll get you a punch in the face. <laughs> yeah, you've seen like face. a couple of berries, love. Ashley's Ashley. spent his weekends in the I'm big market pop in Newcastle. Out. Ashley, to be fair, Ogden has a 98 appearance, so, you know, he, he, I don't have to say anything, probably. He's not below the, the belt of the group. He just he just gives him the smolder. Okay, so how many stuns? I'll give him two. Uh, give her two berries, and she's stunned for two, right? Yeah. So two berries, two That's stuns. Right. So, so, so those are removed. Uh, can you give me an addiction roll, please? Are they? What's the addiction factor on those? Three. 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 Zero three. Is that all? That's rubbish. Sean, can you give me a concert? Sorry. The... Sorry. Is that the D hundred? Yes, a D hundred. That's fine. And one more for the other league, please. 23. Sorry, 63. That's funny. Uh, yeah, you're fine, uh, Shana. Uh, so, Ugnan, that was your turn. Numel, it's your turn. You're not stunned. I've just removed that from you, so you can move. Clearly, Shana was blasted by the ice that the creature was giving off as its last life force, whatever you want to call it, it begins to ebb. <clears throat> the creature is badly damaged, though. So, so, so Numel is Numel is extremely keen to use his his, his new katana. So he closes in. Okay, if you step to there, you're fine. There's a statue in the way, unfortunately. Yeah. So you're going to have to move round to here, for example, to make your attack. <clears throat> That's fine. Did Did you say I need us to make a channeling? Yes, resistance? please. Alright, seventy-five. And you just fail, I'm afraid. So you will take. Sorry, that's an 85. Uh, so you're stunned and unable to parry for three rounds. You'll take you take 14 hits. So I'll apply the damage that so you take 14 hits. You were relatively unscathed before, uh, but the frost damage is so great that actually your skin splits and you're bleeding at four points per round. Ow! Um, but you are Whoa. stunned for two rounds. The skin on your right hand, as the blade begins to thrust towards the creature, turns almost to solid ice. That flashes down the blade, and the skin between your thumb and forefinger, sorry, index finger on your right hand, it just splits open, revealing the fleshy muscle beneath. Um, yeah. So bleeding four per hour. Cran, it's your turn. You're obviously okay. free to move. Yeah, Cran is um, does not like the look of what he'd just seen with both Shana and Numel getting close to that thing and realise how lucky he was last time. He's going to um, ignore his own advice, charge straight up and attack. Oh, yeah, Shana buddy! <laughs> okay, <laughs> can I roll first, please, Cran? Can I'll tell you what, I, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll kind of flank it from where Numel is. As I hopefully yeah, you'll get a flank attack on that, I suppose. There you go. As Cran runs past, can Sherry just hold out the katana in one hand, wordlessly hoping that Cran decides to grab it and swing it in a two-fashion two way? Can, well, fashion I'm just going to ask Cran to make an uh, to take, your, take your head off as you run past. No, He's not, not that stupid. <laughs> oh, he, he noticed that. Uh, okay, so you can grab the katana if you want, Cran. I'll literally just... Well, actually, what, what, I would, what I'll try and do then, because I'm strong enough, but it'll be wildly inaccurate. I'm going to, as I get to here, as I'm kind of running past Cherry yeah. or about to, I will launch the two-handed battle axe in a one-handed throw at the creature in a woo, 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 through okay. the air sort of manner, and then grab the katana. Um, so I don't think I'll be using the katana obviously this round, but I'm going to be using it next round. So completely up to you what penalties it will be for trying to throw a two-handed battle axe at something, but that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, you, you quite like 
making me adjudicate Errol Flynn. It's <laughs> <laughs> tough enough to find me when the party split up. Bloody hell, in Rollmaster, you split up and you say things like, so I grab the wombat, sit on it, and eat it at the same time. What role is that? <laughs> um, okay, I reckon you're trying to basically just throw your axe. Um, so that's going to be a thrown roll. If you don't have the thrown skill, um, that's obviously minus 20, but of course you get your agility on top of that. I do have a thrown skill, not with a right. battle axe. I have it with a bolus, which is right, probably even harder to throw half. than a battle axe. Then it's half. So use half of your thrown skill, plus any right. magical bonus you get with your battle axe. But you will get a rear attack as well, so that's plus 25. So that will take care of the thrown attack. Oh! Oh! Roll a, roll a 64 and it's 121, but I think that may miss it. That just misses, but not by badly enough to actually bury itself in Shana. So your axe <laughs> flies wide and uh, hammers into the wall. At the same time, you, did you say you want to grab the katana that's being handed out by Cherry? Yes, yeah, so I'll grab that in my um, right hand. So I'll grab that in my right hand, cross it over, and then run around behind the Right, wall. and I think, okay then, so to finish that off, let's have a moving maneuver run. Okay. Because obviously you won't complete the run. This is to determine how much of the run you make. So no you want to just... try and move, say, four squares. Let me go back to where I was. So, okay, from the point I pick it up from Joe. Yeah, because you throw the axe and then you think, right, I'm going to grab the... <clears throat> if you fumble this grabbing the katana, that's affect then how far you can then run. Okay. okay. You know, so do that. It's a bit like a baton exchange in a relay race. Crown uh, in very heavy armour. It's not going to go well, guys. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Minus 33. <laughs> Okay, the so katana clatters to the floor. So, if you're moving in that sort of straight line, you'd probably move to about there. And do I do I have the? So my assumption would be I just yes. like scatter yeah, the, katana the katana on the floor. No, no, okay. you have the katana because it's a bit like a baton exchange in a relay race, wouldn't you? You would slow down to an almost a walk as you fumble the exchange, then you finally get the damn thing in your hand. Uh, but that's it. That's the end of your turn, so to speak. You've watched me run relay at school, and that's exactly <laughs> how I used to do it. <laughs> I think we've all done. Uh, uh, we all done. Okay, end of my turn. At school. Yeah, I think so. Oh no, hey, okay. it can't be the end of your turn because you've got to like put your fist on your hip and that Errol Finn way and go, ha ha! That's <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Errol Flynn wouldn't be half as heroic if he's wearing the sort of plate armour that Kran's got on. Well, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't see him dead lobbing an axe around either. Uh, he'd take <laughs> exactly. the card away. Amateur, Cherry. amateur. Amateur. Cherry, it's amateur. your turn. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to jog up to here, and I'm going to have another try with the whip to... Okay. Like, no. Oh, maybe. No, no. Ooh, that was very close. Just missed. The whip flashes within inches of its shoulders. Um, you suspect that a good hit from your whip might lacerate the creature enough to almost remove its head, which is obviously Sweet. badly damaged. Okay, initiative rolls, please, folks. Now, you know that this creature is actually stunned because of the sort of electrical damage that you did. Can we just check, Stuart, the ground is stone? Yes. Okay. Yep. Solid stone. How far uh, below it, like, on a scale basis from where we are, like, the wall here up to... Uh, right, 30. it's only about three feet, so I've okay. not penalised anybody to climb up or down up. Okay, the white is obviously unable to do much at all. Um, it's on its knees. Rather than attack, fortunately for all of you, it stands up and staggers towards the door but will be unable to open it this turn. But what that does mean is none of you suffer the increasingly deathly chill, emphasis on deathly chill, that it is giving off. You close within melee range now, it's going to be a very, very brave manoeuvre. Even from this distance, Cherry and Numel can fear the, feel the cold emanating from it. So can you too, Shana, probably. Uh, Silk, it's your turn now. Silk rolls her eyes that this thing is still freaking alive, <laughs> but she she appreciates the the 
awesome bravery of Cran and the cool cool uh, ability trait. Uh, she she rolls her eyes and she's like, "Okay, don't don't get close to me. I'm gonna try it again." And she's gonna rush a spell one more time. You've got some of you have got these quite potent uh, spell items. Do you remember you got the Tears of the Gods, which give you bonus power points? Right. I, I still have got, mine. Yeah, don't forget you've got these items. No, okay, I don't want ahead, anybody go. dying because of that. You're totally right. Go ahead, uh, so, go ahead. yeah, here we go. It's Silk, how dare you? <laughs> You'll hear my ugly mutter or it'll explode this time. <laughs> That's pretty much it, yeah. Right, remember, so, seven um, squared. Yeah, and remember if you're attacking it from the rear, Silk. So I will give you that bonus if you wish. Okay. Right, if you I are will moving take up it. a ledge and casting a spell, that will be a move. That will be a maneuver. Speed. Okay, I'll do that. The concentration that's required. Um, yeah, it's seventy-five percent to cast, so I, it's no penalty yet. But I'll, I'll make the maneuver for you right now. Yeah, Here we go. Because you, you're getting up that. Yeah. So that's the maneuver. Uh, oh wait, wait. And that's not minus. Minus the 35, so it'll be uh, 65. Sorry. Yeah, 50. and that's not a problem at all. So, yeah, here we go. Targeting. Okay. Oh, come on, baby. Rushing Heard him. Well. Yes, rushing it. So, again, 28 or more. Yeah, okay. But remember, you got the plus 25 from the rear. Yeah. So here we go. Thrusts out both hands, gesticulating <laughs> wildly. Is there any other way? Oh, no. no. Can I just clarify that you're thrusting out both hands from the rear? I, this is now <laughs> more euphemistic than ever. ever oh, stunned as well. So that so is 75 to my... Yeah, so that this triples. Double. The negative becomes tripled. So that's oh, 75. God. Oh, my it, God. Yeah, yeah. 75 so to start plus the roll. Spell as well. And it's an attack, yeah. So here we go. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, nice, oh, nice, nice. Did that's you nice. see what it almost was? Yeah. 22. Oh no, so a 97. Yeah, yeah you that's... triple the negative modifier. Ah, that's an extreme mental pressure causes cast of misfire and collapse to the ground. Ah! You take 10 points of damage, I'm afraid. So you shudder as the spell backfires. You almost sever your tongue as your teeth clamp shut and you fall to the ground, shivering, comatose. And as the rest of you watch in horror, Silk begins to roll up and to tuck herself into a fetal position, clearly terrified by what almost happened. I've got an or vision of some sort of massive Van de Graaff generator she just touched, her whole hair is standing on end with <laughs> marks flying around between it. And oh, well, that, that's okay, roll master. So, uh, Silk collapses to the ground as her rushed spell almost kills her. She looks very, very badly injured indeed. I, I already took the damage GM, so I put oh. myself back to 32. Oh, okay. It's okay. You've done that. Okay, thank you. Numel, it's your turn. Now, you know that if you close on this creature, it is giving off greater and greater and greater. Yeah, I'm, I'm highly reluctant to close on it now. Is it still on fire? No. Okay. Uh, actually, though, that's a good point. It would have taken fire from this right. So I'm just going to add some more fire damage to it. There you go. Do we have an item which was a fire or was it shock? I can't remember now. Is it a fire bolt thing? I have the shock ring. Okay, there's not a fire bolt shield or something, I remember thinking. Yes, and I I thought you were carrying that. No, Somebody was carrying that, that, not that me. shield. Okay. I think Kran's the one who's using it. Isn't it the big one with the big DBs? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, the shield I am using. But remember, that shield will only work if it struck by think if it's struck by magical fire so you can't just put it in a a bonfire and then use it to fire off uh fireball yeah. does it have any existing charges no nope. Pro probably not Pray not, Pray not. <laughs> gotcha okay fair enough sorry no so, no not at all um I, I i'm 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 extremely reluctant to close on it i'm also quite worried now that the creature's going to be able to open the door so I, and you i'm have stunned. a short bow but unfortunately, <clears throat> on your stun, so you can move. You're also bleeding, Numel, aren't you? Four per round. That's and right. you've got a badly injured right hand. So uh, you may want to just retreat and from range get your bow out. I want to, I want to maneuver to a position where well, once I have my bow, I would be able to, okay. be able to yeah, shoot so at whatever it comes. Yeah, so you can move yourself off the ledge. Yep, that's <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to make a maneuver roll. 
Um, and you're beginning to get your bow out. That's fine. Yep. Shana, you are not stunned. Obviously, the creature is horribly cold. Um, but you certainly, with the augment, your attacks augmented by the ring, you could possibly close and do quite a lot of damage on it, if you wish. If I survive the channeling resistance yeah. roll, unfortunately. Um, um, I am going to try and use my chakram, though, for the first yes, time in a yeah, while. Yes, that's fine. Happy with that. Shana hurls a large throwing disc at the creature. It thumps into the creature's side, uh, almost taking off what's left of its badly damaged, broken left arm. Uh, right. Cherry, it's your turn. Okay, so I'm going to step up about there, okay? Yes, that's fine, and you won't suffer the effects of cold damage at all. Yep. So I'm going to go again for a cold shot on this this one with the whip, so I'll take the minus 25 if that's yep, okay. You'll get plus what 25, I'm... which discounts that because you're attacking from the rear again, aren't you? Ah, yes. So let's so that'll just, that. just take that off. And I'm trying to uh, sort of wrap around its legs with the whip and pull it off balance, or at least hold it back from reaching the door. Take the first one, please. Uh, okay. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> um, <No>, actually, <laughs> yeah. Well, the second one would have probably hit, but let me just... Um... Both actually would miss, I'm afraid. So oh. your whip cracks over its head and misses. Fran, it's your turn. So Fran just shakes his head, takes a look at the Horn of Valhalla hanging limply from a thong around his shoulder and go, fuck it, time to use it. He's going to take it out or just hold it up and pour carefully a mouthful or two of water from his flask into it and drink it. I guess that's about all I'll be able to do. Yeah. Maybe move up a little bit this round, but um, and then he's going to hold it to anyone else not affected by that fucking cold. Drink some of this, and uh, he's going to hold it out as it, but just gradually walk forward. So he's got it held in his shield arm, um, yeah. in the hand gripping the shield, and he's holding it up, hoping someone will take it. Maybe proffering it to Newman as he kind of walks past. Okay. Um, just so the description here for you, so. It instantly removes fatigue and gives the imbiber a plus 50 to his next resistance roll. Oh, so, no. lovely. And also, he gets a sense in the next few hours what sort of danger will, will be exposed to. <laughs> I, I don't think I need that, but. Um, I don't know. So, so Cran suddenly starts flailing his arms, going, Danger, danger, Will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, uh, Cran, are you, have you taken any stuff or not? Yeah. Yeah, so I drank, I drank um, a mouthful. So I poured like half a hip flask, uh, half a hip flask, sorry, half a water flask in, drank a mouthful myself, and I'm handing it to Newmal on my way past to say, share it around. Right, to get the effect of the flask, you have to drink the horn. You can't just sip the horn. So you drink the contents of the horn. Okay, so I will drink what I put in there. Right, so that'll be the end of your turn as you down it. You can refill it, of course, with water and then hand it to Numel if you want. So um, I'm handing got... it to Numel. I don't have time for that. I'll just say, Numel, fill this up and drink it and then pass it around. Tell if one to yeah. do the same. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So you'll get that, that bonus to your next resistance roll, Cran. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so yes. Cran um, starts drinking. Oh, no. You're uh, <laughs> never, never too early. <laughs> Uglin starts mumbling arcane wor words as he prepares a spell. Okay, so obviously having seen Shana collect and you're not dis you've decided not to rush your spell. No, I'm okay. assuming I'm assuming uh, I've got one of the pearls, but yes, yes, okay, okay, yeah, you can have one. Uh, initiative rolls, please, folks. Now remember the creature is healing itself slowly, so you have battered it down to within. Well, it's close to collapse. You're up against sort of a time. You've got to batter it down before it recovers fully. Fortunately, of course, this creature is still st struggling and stunned. It is able, though, however, to get to the door and is beginning to move what bar on the door. A very, very simple bar, but a bar nonetheless. Silk, you are motionless, on, quivering, and so on. Yeah. Numel, it's your, your turn. Cr 
Cran has suggested drinking from the flask. Um, though you weren't with them when they found the Horn of Valhalla, um, you certainly know it's magical. I need to get the, the arrow off uh, the surrounds, not... So you can experience. ignore the proffered horn and just fire an arrow at this creature. Now you won't, you suspect, <clears throat> you won't do massive damage, but you're hoping that the cumulative damage will collapse this creature before it removes the locking button. Oi, Numel, what's the matter with me horn? <laughs> is... <laughs> it, Are you there isn't... It for me? <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering, I was wondering, there isn't, what effect would it have if I just take the horn? Would I still be able to, without filling it up and drinking from it, would I be able to take it, get off my shot? And I'm, I'm wondering... I'll allow, I'll, I'll, why don't you, you'll certainly be able to shoot and then take the horn. Yeah. Okay. No euphemism yeah. intended. That is what Numel... So you'll get a rear attack bonus of plus 25 as well. Plus 25? Yep. Yep. Okay, and the creature so... is with one injured hand. It seems to have dropped its uh, vicious looking spear to the ground. It is trying to prise the lock bar up using one arm and the stump of its broken uh, limb. Before Silk passes out, she hears Crane going, Ooh, dibs. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, another blade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Short bow on the white, plus 25. And the arrow stopped into the door, missing. Oh. Shana, you're able to move freely, but you know the creature is moving off a old blast to get too close. But it's also going to remove that bar, and you can see the door being hammered up. Do you want to risk your life and save the party, or do you want to play safe and throw another chakram? Oh no, it's a single. Is it a shingle? Okay. Yeah. Um, if I were to run around down here, yeah, and then and then across, yeah. like that, would I be able to sort of like tackle him away from the door? Would yes, if you can it? make. Yes, I think if given the angle that you've approached, if you make a successful sweep move and hit it, I will um, certainly uh, judge that you've knocked it away from the bar and therefore it can't open the door. Yes. Okay, excellent. But you are going to have to make a channeling roll first. I, I was thinking of, you know, sort of running at it hard from the side and using my momentum to sort of knock it out of the way. It's a you classic know, rugby tackle, Craig. That's okay. what's needed. Uh, yeah, even, even well, it's more of a football the, tackle, isn't it? You're blocking it. Are you trying to just punch it out of the way rather than roll with it. So uh, I tell you, what, if you make a sweep, then you're going to take the potentially the full brunt of the cold damage. If you make a strike, you're trying to strike it away. A successful strike will knock it away from the table, uh, knock it away from the door, but leave you out of range of the coal. Yeah. Because it is, if you go in with a sword, you bites into the creature and for a long enough time you connect the creature to take cold damage. Similarly a sweep. A strike is that much quicker and because you're pulling your hand back, I'd adjudicate that you'd probably take a less severe critical uh, rock failure channeling rock, if you see what I mean. So a strike will be safer for you, but a sweep, as we all know, will probably give you a chance of getting it away but you'll take more damage yeah we're gonna to have to take the damage because my strikes is 63 whereas my sweeps are 136 okay so give me a channeling roll first be a c critical if you can't roll over 75 come on sharna do it do it nice fine yes so you, to, so you make your attackers please then sharna um, I will give you a side flank hit, but you probably don't. Whoa, 209. So you do a small amount of damage as you uh, thrust the creature away, pulling it slightly probably with you. Are you using a charge uh, from the ring? Absolutely. Okay, so that's going to be an electricity critical. It's an A electricity critical. You go. And you know the creature is very susceptible to these. 
Yes, it was a C electricity critical. C was it, thank you. Yes. Uh, so that's 28, there's me trying to cheat. Uh, 28, the creature takes another five points of damage, which is not enough to do anything, but it obviously takes another round of stun. So it's unable to fight you. Um, and more importantly, it's been knocked away from the door. Uh, okay, that's nice, Shana, you're fine. Ugnan, your turn. Shana very bravely takes the creature away from the door um, as she tosses the creature over her hip and rolls it to the floor. Okay, Ugnan looks visibly relieved because he, really, he thought he'd have to suddenly let something go early, earlier than expected, and um, prepares for another round, which is just what he needed, so he's really grateful for Shana. Nice. Okay. Cran, it's your turn. So Cran's going to walk up or move up that 30 feet he'll probably go behind silk and come round from the other side of the column yeah and i'll give you a flank attack on and what i'm doing and so i is there if i literally just drop my shield so i can use the katana two-handed is that yeah, like a I'm let, free yeah, action no, that's yeah that, I, i'd say that okay so i'm Stop giving myself enough clang. space enough space to swing it freely at the back of yep. the thing and it's i'm gonna need a channeling resistance roll first i'm afraid big bull. and that's at plus 50 now yeah oh damn it yes <laughs> the dungeon <laughs> master must never try and in beat the players said gary <laughs> 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 channeling well i still haven't not screwed this up yet so i rolled a five last time with it i rolled an 81 this time that's bad oh my god you actually feel a close if you there's the power of ancient heroes that have sounded the horn beforehand fill your very being cran i've got the horn I'm... sorry <laughs> yes i've got the horn i'm feeling <laughs> olympic oh that's better that's oh, a 99 yeah. 99 plus 10 this time, which is 229. That better hit this time. <laughs> the katana uh, severs the head from the creature as you step in bravely foregoing the damage. And although the cold uh, is tangible, you seem not to notice it at all. The snick, the katana cuts the creature's head off. That would be um, 40 points of damage, and you do a wholly critical. Let's see, just for the lols, if we can't find the critical well, is that open is, is wholly open-ended oh, i think it's open-ended but i just yes, for the band to critical arms law i can't see wholly anywhere that yeah. large creature so is where it. All... got it off you go roll your wholly critical holy yes. <laughs> holy critical batman holy batman <laughs> is sorry, that sorry open... crack you got there first Sorry. Is that is that <laughs> high open ended or just um, open? Um, I believe it's high open ended. Yes, it is. Let's see what we can do. That's good. The whole of you. Ninety-three. <clears throat> so as the holy Amarishi Forge takes the creature's head off, the Tana turns in your hand with a will of its own and plunges down deep into the creature's chest cutting through the uh, powderous block of the creature's heart. A critical strike to foe's chest, severs a vein, foe is stunned for two rounds, falls into unconsciousness and then dies after six rounds. So just for cinematic, cinematic purposes, what, what Kran does there is he's, he's got it over his shoulder, swings in a two-handed way to sever the neck of this thing, sprays dust and bits of bone in Shana's face uh, as, as this katana whistles within inches and with his back to the creature just does the very nonchalant thrust behind oh, him yes, and it stabs right. him in, stabs him in the heart and uh, finishes him off pounding on the door is still there but the creature collapses twitches and um you can see that as it lies there its limbs begin to turn dust so unfortunately does that nice looking spear the spear begins to fade and shimmer as well but you've killed it. Congratulations, everybody. Oh, Crano could just collapse down on the floor. Uh, Fuck. Does the door look like it's going to be battered down in time? No. Are oh, very, very stout wooden doors indeed. Can you give me perception rolls, however? All of you are close to the door, staring in horror as the door is hammered against. 
the warding sign on this door uh, looks faded and worn as if acid has been thrown against it. So the warning sign here, uh, if uh, Ugnan, I'm afraid you're the only one knows to speak at the moment. Um, can you give me a law roll, please? Which law do you want? Uh, Any one you choose. Uh, one relevant to demons. So if you've got... I've got demon, demon or obscure. Demon, demon, uh, demon or obscure will do for me, please. Demon, make both. Make a demon law first, because they probably tell you different. Demon law first. Um, okay, yes, this would put against demons. Obscure law will probably tell you that since the warding sign has been damaged, clearly this sign is probably not going to keep out demons and un un dead. Um, they're not particularly difficult roles. Any time that a, a warding is damaged or a pentagram is um, uh, uh, scarred in any way, the magic won't work properly. Okay, so. Can I first aid uh, Numal? Uh, yes, you can. Stop his bleeding. Okay, Thank so you. Should 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 I um should I still drink um from the 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 horn that um Cran gave me, or would would that no. um now be overkill? Don't know what do you fancy. I mean, the horn is there. You can drink from it to gain the benefit. How long does the effect last? For? It's a day. It's yeah. a day. It's an yeah, amazing, no, it's amazing, amazing. It's, it's a full on artifact. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth taking. Everyone taking. Should yeah, so take. it's worth probably all of you take bonus to your resistance. Right, the key thing. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Insight that you get is pretty yes. much a one off. So you'll get, you'll drink it, and you'll get insight of the next danger that's going to hit you in the first sort of few minutes, first few hours. But the bonus to your resistance roll will last the entire day. Okay, wow. so 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 Numal Numal will um, fill the horn with from his water pouch and then shock it back as it were. Yeah, so you might want to make a note somewhere on your bonus to any resistance rolls. And Cran looks a bit sheepish when he and he admits to everyone. Yeah, actually, completely fucking thought I had this. It was like banging me in the hip, and suddenly remembered. <laughs> Good job you remember, lad. <laughs> Right, what um, Uglin would like to do is give out some Veldorak, which is uh, really a cold healing thing. So it heals 1 to 50 hits resulting from cold. So I'm going to give that first. I think Sharna took the brunt of it. I think Numal took some cold damage. Silk, I think you took a little bit. <laughs> Silk got hit pretty hard, I think. Yeah, but I think it was, She's I think, out cold, so yeah. Yeah, Silk is um, done. I've taken the stuns, etc. off you because you're on weight. Um, until you're all able to move, and, and you can you can take uh, berries and various drugs if you wish, or you can just wait for five rounds, five minutes if you wish. It's up to you. Well, that's uh, it. But, she'll she'll just wake up on her own. Okay, but if you look at the sheer uh, physical damage, so, yes, you know, <laughs> still take thirty-two, Numel twenty-two, uh, Shana thirty-seven, Ugnan twenty-nine. You've all battered a bit. And remember, Numal is bleeding at four hits per round. Yeah, so I've, about yeah, I've just given him a 206 so. first aid roll. Right, okay, okay he's so nice. he's no longer bleeding. Fine, that's good. Um, so I'll give so out who, those who would, yeah. So basically it's a D50 uh, to whoever took the cold damage, so whoever, whoever you want to give that to, GM. Pretty much everybody here. Okay, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yeah, might as well do it all then, and that's uh, the Veldorak gone. Okay, uh, so is it a D50 hit points back? Yeah. Okay, so do you want to roll a D50? Sure, okay, you want to roll your own? So that for me is, uh, what, 19. Oh, an entire four. Excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, big lad, it's not Rook. Give yourself a those. Well, this stuff's shit, what's this? <laughs> you wait till you see the addiction rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got addicted to this rubbish. Oh, <laughs> don't be addicted to the expensive stuff, man. Don't worry, it's only F2 and it's eight silver pieces. So I've got one hit point back. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 have, you have rolled D100, right? Oh, sorry, sorry, oh. sorry, you lot. I, I think I got sold some duds. Oh, nobody's addicted so far. Well, at least I passed uh, the addiction roll. Yes, right. <laughs> That would be the worst if you didn't, and you healed the one. Yeah, this stuff is rubbish. It's like peppermint. Don't even get a buzz. 
You've been sold some of the oregano. That's right, this stuff is rubbish. <laughs> while, while we're doing that and, and everyone's disgruntled and all that sort of stuff, I come up to Cran and I go, hey, big man, um, looks like these will be handy to keep around and I'm guessing that I'm going to need you to help me train in two weapon, two-handed weapon use. Can, you, can we work on that on a, like, afternoon, evenings, when we're not trapped and about to be eaten by hundreds of undead <laughs> sound of things? Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> I saw your right out. I was going to wonder awesome. what you are. That's all I'm good at. Better, better start learning other ways of you. That was close, Silk. Silk's constitution rolls. So she turns around and you can... He crans nose his sniff and go, wait a minute, I can smell something. It's Akbutish Cran slaps at his hand. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, right, let's... So, so Numal says, oh, I've still got the horn. Does anyone want it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You just had him up, we'll knock him down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I'll take my I'll yeah, take my I'll, one back, thanks. Oh uh, well I'll I'll have I'll do the ritual and gain it as well. Yeah, I think, so, so I was we'll gonna shoot the horn, but uh, I think if no, no hey. there is no there are no sheaths gained. <laughs> right, so while that's happening, uh Ugly's gonna pass around some draft. Uh, so then we'll start with two draft. That's uh, uh, well to make things easy. It's uh, forty ten. Sharna, uh, start with uh, seven seven draft. So that's uh, I don't know, it's seven draft. Let's do four four draft. So that's eight d ten. Thanks. We 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 got him. We we took him out. That was a nasty fight. Well done. Yeah, we're not even in the Hun City yet. Oh. Yeah, right. These are just a gig. Right. Um, I think we should leave here. Leave. Pair boys and uh, go go south and uh, sit on the beach. <laughs> uh, just because, just because I know you want to, I'm going to give Rook uh, one Rook to Cran just for a, a D20. Oh no! Well, that oh. might feed his addiction for another week. Oh, cheers, mate. We see him yeah. rub it on his skin before he. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll. You see him rubbing it on his teeth. Is, is, is Rook uh, brewed up or is it? Yeah, I've, I've, I've brewed it up so it lasts two weeks. So as long as I'm not here more than two weeks, it doesn't go off. But there's only um. So we just sniff it. There's eight sniff doses it left. Very strongly first, and then uh, and then take a good swig from the uh, from the flask. I, I think. I think for you it's like some some cool tea, some some lovely tea. Yeah, <laughs> it's a. I call it tincture. <laughs> <laughs> so what I what does it heal? Is it D10? 20, yeah. twenty. Twenty. D20. Twenty. Twenty. Excellent. Wow. Nice stuff. That. Thank you. So oh, perfect. Um, yeah. I'm back to one. That's all. That's that's good enough. That's all I need. One hit point. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. So, having a very quick look at damage again, probably pretty good to go. I mean, it's still most bad. Uh, Numel still on sort of fifty percent. Who Numel? Numel, you should be rolling uh, four, uh, four, four to forty. So forty ten. Okay. Four forty ten. Okay, yeah, we'll and you'll get those hit points back. I'll, and you can yeah have those hit points. So obviously any constitution damage that you've taken, they go 18 back, that's looking a bit better. That much better, you've only got four hit points worth of damage. Um, remember the constitution damage you took from the undead, you'll get back at the rate of one per day. So you rest and poop for a number of minutes, eyeing the door cautiously. I suppose in many ways a mark of how you become as heroes as the new harmony is the fact that you can rest knowing that there are foul creatures on the other side of the door and not flinch or move away from the door. Um, obviously a testament to what you are becoming. However... Stupid. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> uh, Lucky. Um, uh, it also makes Ugnan realise that he probably should be resting at some point to get some power, but um, he's still got a pearl in his hand, but we need have. to do that at some point. So you rest, uh, take some <clears throat> applied poultices, drink some of the healing uh, medicinal herbs that Ugnan can pre prepare for you. There are a number of doors that you can now explore. Fortunately, the pounding behind one of them now completely. Um, can you give me some perception, pro uh, perception rolls, please, as you listen anxiously to the sound of the ravenous undead on the other side. Shana, everything seems quiet. Uh, Numel, you can't hear any. 
nor can the rest of you. Creatures you either, the creatures have either retreated or are waiting silently on the other side of the door. You don't know. Certainly... You New Mouse can hear a pin drop in, a, in another continent with that rock. So, you've got two doors to the south. The alcove that this creature came out of is empty. You can see that on your maps. There are two other doors further north um, against the western wall. And there are two doors on the northern wall. All of them seem to have um, warding signs on them. All of them seem to have locking bars. It's a very, very simple, crude affair. Do we want to, to investigate the crypt? It's only well, considering doors. the struggle, I... It's only the southern doors that have damage. By crypt, you mean the sarcophagus? Sorry, yes, that's right. The, the one in the room, yeah, absolutely. As Cran steps to the back of the room. And, and for somebody else to do it. Uglin, just, just while I remember his, in his, his old middle-aged brain, uh, was thinking, I, I think it might be a really... Uh, bad idea actually if we did remove all the wards from these doors and take them elsewhere because they've clearly been here for a while and they're clearly hearing keeping things back so maybe you should keep things as they are and maybe just learn how to uh to, to, to draw these things that's good advice as ever uh, yes you could probably repeat these you could certainly learn how to draw them the you can't thought... take rubbings of the, of the of these warping signs but you could certainly copy them if you wished I, I thought I took an etching of them last time. It wasn't an etching. You probably took a drawing. I, I was just going to scrape, you know, put a parchment over the top and just use some charcoal to... You can sketch them, but you can't etch them because they're that. not engraved. You could certainly draw oh, okay. them out, uh, Cherry. And if you, if you think you've already done so, you probably have. So that's fine. Yes, you could repeat the drawing. But the sarcophagus itself, that certainly Numel has approached, and the rest of you, the rest of you approach, is as elaborate as the rest. But it seems incomplete. Um, there is clearly an open space that could be chiselled with some sort of inscription and name, but it hasn't been finished. <clears throat> incomplete, um, in in the sense that nothing was. Um buried here? Or, um, well, the sarcophagus the, the, is intact, the lid is on top, it's big enough to hold, <clears throat> you know, a large humanoid, and there's decorative stonework and decorative scroll work around the edges, but you'll remember on two of the other stone sarcophagi that you've found, there's been an elaborate piece of poetry, some prose, and the name, you suspect, of the person who's been interred inside the sarcophagus. There's no writing of any on this. And you remember the writing is in a language known as Amorish. Thanks to Silk's magic, you were able to decipher it. Do we want to um, throw off the lid of the sarcophagus to see if there's any treasure within it? Oh, yes. That? Oh, yes. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know automatically when Silk agrees it's not something say, you want to do. <laughs> Didn't even need a self-discipline roll for that answer. <laughs> yeah, just automatic. <laughs> just automatic. Do it. So, let's do it. Fortunately, yeah. when you've lifted off the lids of the other sarcophagi, the dead that were laid to rest inside remained at rest. So you approach the sarcophagus and start beginning to position yourselves to lift the lid off. Cran, as strong as he is, is going to need some help to remove the stone lid. Hang on a minute, I've had Betty supercharged, she's fine now, she can do anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cherry readies Betty, his uh, faithful border crowbar. Um, <laughs> do, do we want the spell users to prepare their spells before we do this? Numal, you are a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 a big lad. Um, uh, and he starts preparing stuff. That takes Numa, me back. Isn't Numa that the, gets his uh, katana ready? Isn't that a vase character, the faithful border bin liner? Uh, uh, yes, it was. It was. I uh, can't remember it now. But faithful... Black bag. Yeah. That was what it was. Black called. bag. Faithful. That's right. Yes. Not faithful border with Buster gonads. Okay, Cran, you've got uh, your crowbar ready. Can I have one of you make a strength roll? Because there's two of you. Helping Cran at one end, uh, Shana at the other. Shana, who's 
um, built for speed and agility, but is um, deceptively strong. Uh, can you make me an easy strength roll, please, Cran? Because you've got Betty as well to help you. Uh, I'll try. No problem. Easy. You leave uh, the lid. There's nothing inside as far as you can see by the light of the three crystals that are still filling the room with a soft blue glow. Can all four of you, however, oh, sorry, uh, so that would be Silk, Cran, Numel, and Shana, can you give me a resistance roll? You cannot apply the plus 50 bonus to this resistance roll, I'm afraid. Oh, bugger. <laughs> I'm ah, what we ah. against. Resistance to what? Channeling or okay. The enemy trapped it. Good luck, everybody. Okay. Oh, oh. Excellent, Cran. Yeah. Elvin so negative. As you lift the di uh, the the um, lid up, all of you feel a sense of sadness, emptiness, and there's something that is incomplete and not finished. But that's it. No other ill effect. Oh. Yeah, you, you could have applied the plus 50. I still would have been saying just... <laughs> so, like, a feeling of dread coming out of it? No, it's not a feeling of dread. It's a feeling of melancholia, sadness. Yeah. Something hasn't been completed. There is something missing about this wonderful resting place. You remember the other hall was a hall of memory and a hall of remember, um, a monument to these people. Something yeah. should be in this sarcophagus. It's a very prominent position, but it's empty. Someone's moved the body. It's dust now, I think. Could well be. There is, as you explore what's inside the sarcophagus, nothing. It is indeed absolutely empty. And as you notice again, you can't help but look down and think, yes, and even the inscription has been finished. Really? Or even started. Okay. Where next, folks? Cram puffs his cheeks out and just takes a look around. Well, not down to the south, that's for sure. Where do you reckon? North? I guess so, mate. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yep. I head up. <clears throat> so this is same bound from the inside, like the door below? Yeah, so like all of these doors have got um, what is a very primitive locking mechanism. Sorry, the door that you're at at the moment, sorry, Cherry, yeah, uh, has just a crude lock box. There is no lock on it, however. Yeah, so and it's just like lifting the bar and... Absolutely, yeah. Was this door down here where the, the white came from? That just yeah. opens up into an empty alcove. You can see that there is a pile of dust in the... being disturbed. The creature has been lurking, lairing here for some years. Uh, Shana, give me a perception roll, actually, since you... Uh, Ugnan, you can give me a perception roll as well. Charlie, you can see uh, bone rodents and you can see the wings of some particularly large butterflies, perhaps moths. In fact, actually, yes, they're moths rather than butterflies. The iridescence isn't as, isn't pronounced enough to be moths. Uh, clearly, this creature has been eating, uh, consuming rodents and things that flew into the temple from above. But there's nothing else here. Nothing valuable, certainly. Mm. Okay. Good source of protein, so I understand. <laughs> Even you, diminutive as you are, lift far off if you wish, and does Ag on the other side. Does Agnan share that information about the? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the yeah, the bones yeah, and in, stuff. Yeah, in China, with yes, this creature up. Thing. So I, I immediately look down at the at the floor and see if there's like any any bone fragments. Nope. Nope. No. You can assume that we'll, uh, if, if um, Ugg never hears or sees anything, he'll probably moan about it, so um, or like grumble about it in some way. So you'll definitely always pass it on. Uh, that's disgusting. Yeah. So if we, um, Cran, did you want to keep the katana for a while, or do you want me to carry it? No, you take it. It's, uh, okay. uh, it needs most of the time, but it's uh, it's too bloody light. Yeah. It nearly got away from me. <laughs> if we go right up to the door, yeah. can we hear anything behind it? You can have a listen, Cherry, if you want to give me a perception, please. She's certainly right against the door. Yep. Um, Shana, yes, you too, please give me a perception roll. 
And, and can we feel the coldness that the, the undead were giving off? No, no, you, you haven't. And you've never felt this sort of before creature was you know, unusually cold, even for an undead thing. Neither of you, neither Shana or Cherry, can hear anything on the other side of the door, nor can you feel anything. The door feels cool, but not cold. As cool as all the other stonework that you've experienced. Do you want okay, to so, further? Yeah. Yep, I'll pop the pop the thing and open it up for the for everybody else to go through first. Door opens into what seems to be a empty uh, stone chamber. In the centre of the stone chamber, there what there there is what looks to be a fountain. Of course, the water has long since dried up. Uh, though there are a few coins, regular coins that have been tossed uh, into it. Alcoves around the chamber have been sort of richly carved into, again, these angelic figures. You can't see anything else. Okay. Um, as we move to the next, well, I'm going to, if anyone wants to look in there, that's fine. I'm just going to go up and have a listen to the next one. Yeah, I'm going to have a look inside the... Uh, Work out where we're going or get out. Okay, can you give me a perception roll first, um, please, Cherry? So you're listening for noises sure. on the other side. You can't hear anything on the other side. And again, it doesn't feel very cold, but something catches your eye, something about the door. Can you give me another perception roll, please? Can you give me a hard perception roll, please? Uh, there is something not quite right about the door. Right, you probably need silk or ugnant. Oh yeah, well silk's coming up towards me. Oh, yeah, it's not quite shower. right. Just say, um, have a look at this door. Can you give me a light perception roll, please, silk? Cherry okay. said she doesn't like the look of the room. There's something that's quite right about it. Okay. So can you give me a light perception roll as you study the room a little bit more closely? The rune hasn't been drawn correctly. One of the cross figures on it, which should be horizontal, isn't. It's angled down. Can you give mm. me a law roll, please, Silk? Either obscure law or demon law, whichever one. Both okay. would reveal the same information. She will use for demon law for... Yeah. Fine. Nice run. Right. This warding sign, though it hasn't damaged, is ineffectual. It's just a pretty pattern on the on the top. Don't get everything absolutely geometrically precise. Warding signs, just like pentagram, are next to useless. So it's not drawn precisely no. and so useless because yeah, of... it's useless. Gotcha. So I'll I'll make a note of that and I'll I'll tell Cherry that it's uh, it's ineffectual. It's uh, it's not working. So whatever's behind it. Isn't being prevented to stay there. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I'll Jerry? just wait. I'll, I'll, well, I think that we wait until um, they're finished out of the room, and then we can grab Fran and Shana to be ready to. Because you, we, if Come something on, wasn't, you see? if that's not, if that's not, like magically barriered, it either means something got in there and just is trapped by the door itself to come out, or, um, yeah, you know, it could be something. Come on, it's nothing. You and I, stop, we could take that. Stop egging me on. <laughs> what oh, hi, Karen. What, what, what are you doing what is, here? Uh, what is it, Cherry? <laughs> there, there's likely something behind this door, but I don't know. I'll yeah, watch it. So so I'll watch it. I'm, I'm staying around. I'm here. I'm... <laughs> I just want to wait until everyone's available. Did Ugnam find out what he was looking for in, um, in the There is nothing in the other room. Nothing of. No. Um, the intricate engravings on the alcoves, again, depict Amarishi going about what looks like everyday activities. Though, actually, Newman, if you can give me an Ugnan and if you exception roles as you remain behind and look at them closely. So none of the Amarishi are bearing weapons or doing anything uh, martial. Instead, Ugnan, you're able to see that all of the Amarishi seem to be giving. Uh, there are images of them giving food to people, not on Amarishi. There's images of them giving timber from a wagon to humans who look very badly dressed. There are images of them helping sick people and injured animals. Make of what you will. Other than that, though, that 
room is empty. Okay. I'd really like to Can make... I just ask? Um, sorry. It, I know that like I'm interpreting from the, fo- the from the picture of the map or whatever. Those those lanterns there. Those are they actually alight or? They're glowing. There's they're no glowing? heat. Yeah, there's no heat no. coming off them. They're just oh, glowing. Okay. That made me wonder when Cherry and I were in that ziggurat um, or apex stone monolith. Did the the light that exploded when I tried to add water or put it in our water canteen? Yeah. It, did it look like that or different? No, no, different. This is this is different. Okay. And are they? Can we pick them up? Their orbs? You yes, if you wish to. The, the orbs are quite big, heavy, but you can pick them up if you wish. But okay. I, was just, I was just trying to. Work out if we could find another, maybe find another orb that will sit in the fourth one. Maybe that's what that sense of sadness you mentioned. Does it look broken here, GM? Of of yes. an orb? Or... Yeah, oh. that orb has been broken. Okay, so I won't I won't grab it, but I'll just you know take a look. I don't want to tune it or anything. <laughs> that would be weird. But okay, but... Cran. While well while Silk's Silk's not looking, we'll open the door. <laughs> All right, I got you back. But those that broken orb and the tumble stuff isn't there like a crack in the ceiling above? Yeah, there is. Yeah, so you remember the ceiling above is cracked. There was a tremor which shook this building, probably knocking over that toppled statue that you can see in the top corner. And the statue then, as it fell, took out the orb, smashing it. And it's not a palantir silk. You can get as excited as <laughs> I tried. There's no eye staring back at you. Uh, <laughs> Cherry, Cran, do you wish to open that? Yeah, why not? Just because okay. Silk's distracted. <laughs> yeah. Got it back, Cherry. Laugh. <laughs> okay, the door opens and you can see like um, a large room filled with five plain sarcophagi. Unfortunately, one of the sarcophagi uh, or one of the sarcophagi's lid has recently been removed. And you can see there's a tall figure that begins to stir as you enter the room. The figure looks to be a human, completely wrapped in bandages. Fuck everyone! Begins to weapons! To moan as you begin to move. Hi, I'm Silk! <laughs> can I have some initiative rolls? For- Ooh, I'll get plus 20 on my first round. Oh, and I rolled an 18. Oh my god, sorry about that. And I still don't yeah. beat Silk! Outrageous. One day, one day. <laughs> Silk, surprise, surprise, surprise. You get to go first. Hi, I'm Silk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I I did <laughs> roll over 50 from a self-discipline, so I won't do that. Yeah, I'll just hold my action until I see what other people are doing. So I'll go. I'll go. Done. Okay. Uh, Cran, it's your turn. So what do you want to do, Cran? Okay, um, run away. No, Cranwell, he's going to grab his axe and jog up and him, after shouting, there's something bandaged in here! Everyone, weapons! And then he's going to swing it hard. Okay. Cran, so what if he wants to talk? He hasn't got any lips. Put the horn away, Ew. stop swinging it hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. So, Cran, you step in with your axe and absolutely bury your axe into um, the creature's sort of upper torso as it begins to think about climbing out. Can you roll your D critical for the... So, wait a minute, I think it's immune to criticals. Uh, Sorry, that's going to be a B critical, sorry, rather than a D. I rolled a 55, by the way. And I'll shout, get in there, Silk, it's rather fucking undead, isn't it? Okay, so it takes another few points of damage, but that's it. Obviously, it's tougher, it looks. Uh, Numel, it's you next, unless you want to do anything, Silk. Well, uh, just a lore check if he's saying, you know, what he's saying. Uh, just for undead killing ability, is there anything that uh, a weakness for? Fire. Okay. Fire. Yeah, much like the other thing, uh, this is probably not susceptible susceptible to electricity but it will be to fire okay. uh, new mole so you can go ahead and do a regular attack uh, yeah I'd like to do that although I was in the other room with Ugnan so I'm, I'm a bit I'm, I'm so, right, somewhat so further to, away yeah so you're gonna this round you'd be able to move to the round and that would be your turnover okay thank you 
Shana, it's your turn. I too would like to run as close as I can, please. Yep. Oh, man. I'm going to mutter and go, oh, oh, bloody hell, and start running. So he'll go at whatever pace he can manage and try and get as far as the doorway, if he can do yeah. that, which I think is seven. Yeah, I think so. That's about 84 feet, so it looks like it's uh, one and a half times his run. A jog or a sprint to him. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, blo oh, bloody hell. That, that, that's the end of his round. Cran Hello. just charged in. He didn't want to um, talk. So Cherry's getting a katana ready. Going, oh, here we go again, and running up, I, I guess, to here, so I can get a blow in before we, um, so. Yeah, so you'll be able to attack it this round. Yep. Uh, Does that give me flank, so that'll make it one forward? No, I won't give you flank on it yet, we can't yep. attack anybody yet. Uh, so, your katana actually catches the creature um, with a really vicious blow across yeah, yeah. its so, so that's a 13 slash, but against undead, it's holy. So, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. If uh, uh, it looks so, yeah, the critical is fine. Um, okay, right. Uh, <laughs> that's a minor holy. So, your just... katana, your Amarishi Forge Blade, flashes past uh, Kran's axe, slams it into the creature's right arm and does some more damage, severing bandages, and again, puff of powder as your blade cracks home. Um, unfortunately, it's now the creature's turn. Uh, obviously, you hitting it with a whole blade, Jerry, has drawn its ire to you. No! <laughs> and it's going to attack you. Okay, the creature, um, with its bandaged hands, um, basically just reaches out, Cherry, and tries to punch you, uh, punch which me. it does, and it knocks you back. Oh. You roll punch, and have only taken seven points of damage. Can you give me a constitution? That's uh, what I was waiting for. <laughs> constitution yeah. save, please. This is big, Cherry. This is huge. Oh, good job. Okay. Ooh, right. And we'll stop there for the evening, folks. Well, as you heard, that's the end of this episode. Next episode, we'll see us finish this fight and start a couple more. Look, I know we said we did this for our benefit, but it's really nice to see that other people are actually watching this, you know, poor masochists. I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see how many edits there are. It takes quite a lot of time to do that. So know that people are actually watching that. This is a real boost. Anyway, all the usual ways of getting in contact with us is all that bollocks in the description. Happy gaming. See you later.